The Lord be with you. Today is All Saints Sunday, and we'll talk about what a saint is. Our gospel lesson is the, from Luke chapter 6, which features the Beatitudes according to Luke, and we'll talk about uh, the blessed life. Please note that there's a couple of things going on. One is, the, um, on Tuesday evening, anybody know what's happening Tuesday? <laughs> Big election, right? And um, Janet Given at South Street Christian Church, I believe this, this is the second time she's done this, she's had a, and she's hosted an ecumenical service, a election day communion service. And um, uh, Mick and I went to it four years ago, and uh, I just want you to know that that's available for you to go to. We also um, are going to dedicate the pledge cards right uh, when the um, Right after the, the song, after we collect the offering, and uh, we'll do that this week and next week. And there was something else I was going to announce, but I think that's about it for now. Anybody else have any announcements? Oh, by the way, two baptisms today. Uh, Tatum Grace Cleveland and Rowan Sierra Freeburg will be baptized today. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have raised up amongst us saints to be our guides, to be our mentors, to be our friends as we make our way through your kingdom. Help us to join them. Help us in all that we do to live out the beauty of your creation and the beauty of your kingdom. Be especially with us this day as we welcome two new members to that kingdom. And let us be faithful in helping them be good members of that kingdom. These things we ask in the name of the blessed, glorious, and eternal Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise and join the singing. Oh, no. 
second service will be on the screen overhead, and I invite everyone to come forward. Oh, did I? I did mean baptism. Dear friends, we rejoice today that Tatum Grace Cleveland and Rowan Sierra Freeburg, through baptism, are becoming members of the body of Christ and inheritors of God's kingdom. It is an opportunity for all of us to renew our faith. What can we do to become children of God? We can do nothing. Only God can make us his children. Is that what happens in baptism? Yes, in the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God, inheritors of eternal life. In the waters of baptism, we continue. In the waters of baptism, we are joined to the death and resurrection of our Lord, so we are born again into the family of God. So parents and sponsors, there are promises you are making today as you come with Tatum and Rowan to receive the gift of baptism. You promise to live with your children among God's faithful people, to come with them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, read and place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and be a loving family nurtured in faith and prayer so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others the world God had and the world God made and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to grow in the Christian faith in the Christian faith and life? And if so, parents and sponsors say I do. And now to the people of God, do you promise to support these children and pray for them in their new life in Christ. Congregation, please rise. And first, parents and sponsors, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Parents and sponsors, if you do, you say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce. And now let us confess the faith we believe and that Tatum and Rowan will grow to understand. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word that Tatum and Rowan washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life 
To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Tatum Grace Cleveland, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Rowan Sierra Freeburg, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Tatum. There we go. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Rowan, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And now the two of you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for making Tatum and Rowan your own and raising them up to a new life through baptism. Pour out your Holy Spirit and strengthen them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Okay, Tatum and Rowan, watch David. Uh, David, right here. light of the world has come into your life. You are to let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And God's people respond, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as members of the body of Christ, children of the same heavenly Father, and workers with us in the kingdom of God. Congregation, please rise. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. Peace. God's peace.
Our service continues with the reading of the gospel lesson, which comes from Luke chapter 6. Please rise. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods... Do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people to come forward. We're going to sit right over here. Cal, are you all right? <laughs> if I felt like that, I wouldn't be all right. Good morning. It's All Saints Sunday. And Jesus said, a saint can be someone who's poor, or who mourns, or who has people abuse them because they believe in Jesus. We're going to learn a word today, sein zucht. I'm, it's a German word, I'm not exactly pronouncing it right, but it's a sense of it means a sense of longing that we all have. Did you know that Charlie has Zeinzucht? And so does Lincoln. And so does Cal. Everyone has it. A longing. Oh, did I call? Excuse me. Excuse me, Henry. I called you by your brother's name, Charlie. <laughs> Thank you for knowing what I meant. But, so we're going to see Pelly, and we're going to see the turkey, okay? Ah, 
Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, hi, Turkey. How are you, Turkey? Gobble, gobble, gobble. Oh, hi, Pelly. Why, why so glum? Oh, gobble, gobble, gobble. I have a feeling I'm missing something. I'm uh, missing something? Like what? Halloween candy? No, I've got plenty of that. Friends, may maybe. Friends, I'll be your friend. No, I've got plenty of friends. Thank you for being my friend, Pelly. Oh, uh, Thanksgiving is coming. Are you afraid you will be on the Freeburg's dining room table? No, 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 that's not it. Pastor Dan will take care of me. I, I think I know. I think I know. It's Zeinzucht. God bless you. Are you coming down with a cold? No, no. Sein, sein zucht. Sein, God, sein zucht. God bless you. I hope that's not catching. It, it's not a cold. Then, then what's your problem? Well, it's your problem too. It's sein zucht. My problem is Zeinzucht? Yes. What, what is Zeinzucht? A, a universal longing for something more in life. Yeah, that's me. I have Zeinzucht. That's right. Uh, how do I get rid of it? By being blessed. Blessed? Blessed. You know... Uh, blessed, knowing that you need God. Thank you. I do know I need God. That's the cure for Zeinzucht. God bless you. Well, God bless you too, Turkey. Let's, let's, let's sing. Let's sing. Oh, oh how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Gobble, 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 gobble. That's all, folks. I just realized something. My, my handle was, was stuck, so I was not moving his mouth. I was moving his eyes. User error. Sign zooked. We all have it. Okay? What's the cure? Knowing you need God. And knowing when you, that you need God is the way to live a blessed life, a saintly life. Okay, you know what we're going to do right now? Let's pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. Help us grow in our understanding that we need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Live simply life that really is life. Uh, and we're going to talk, by the way, that was a prelude into our adult sermon. We are going to talk about Zeinzucht. I realize I'm not getting quite the German pronunciation, but it's as much as this Swedish Norwegian can do. Let's begin with a Halloween story. Oh, well, you keep your eye on the puppet and see if it moves. All right, and we'll talk about it later, all right? Uh, let's begin with a Halloween story, a story about a young boy, four years old, who came to the door, rang the doorbell, a woman answered, he said, trick or treat, held out his hand, and she put a treat in his hand, and she goes, don't you have a bag, a trick-or-treat bag? And he goes, oh, yes, but it's so heavy, so my mom is carrying it. So the woman decided to tease him a little bit, and she goes, well, you have a big S on your shirt, Aren't you Superman? And he goes, yeah. He looks down at his shirt and said, yeah, the S is for Superman, but I'm not really Superman. These are my pajamas. <laughs> well, today is the day we celebrate the fact that we might not have S for Superman on us, but we all are marked with an S for saint. That S could also be something that's not as wonderful for us, this Zeinsucht. Zeinsucht. And what is Zeinsucht? It is this universal longing, this deep sense. It's a blessed longing. Uh, oh, Goethe and um, and I was picked up later by, by other poets and philosophers and even theologians that, that talk about this blessed longing we have, a soul longing, that there's something more in life. It is a sense of deep, inconsolable longing, a yearning, the feeling of intensely missing something when we don't even know what it is. This yearning. Oh, my life should be more. An example of it was Lyle Dolly. I talked about Lyle at, um, at his funeral. Lyle was someone who had, oh, oh, by the way, this is a picture of Lyle the day before he died. He was so happy that he voted. By the way, we don't tell you how to vote in this church. Some people find that refreshing, but uh, we do tell you to vote, go out and vote. We think you're smart enough to figure out who to vote for. But uh, Lyle, we could say, is one of those dead people who voted, right? But St. Lyle, here's the interesting thing about Lyle. He had a sense, his family, when we talked about Lyle, he had a sense that there was a longing. But he was one of those blessed people that Jesus talked about because he realized his soul longing could only be fulfilled by God, by the kingdom of God. Let me explain. Lyle was poor. He grew up poor, grew up, uh, was born in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. Uh, he had the unfortunate um, 
or we could even say fortunate in some respects, uh, situation in life that his stepfather was a hopeless alcoholic. He drank away all the extra funds that they had, even funds that they couldn't afford to lose. Uh, he said when they moved from one apartment to another, it was usually a step down, not a step up. Lyle remembers one Christmas where they had a potato and they had water. So Christmas dinner was potato soup. That's how poor he was. But Lyle had this longing. He knew there was more. And that's why when Jesus says, blessed are the poor, he had this longing that he knew there was more in life. And we all have it. The only thing is, too often we think that longing can be answered by a little bit more money, a little bit more status in life, nicer home, nicer car, whatever. Blessed are the poor, because there is no place to turn for them except God. Lyle, at a young age, his family didn't go to church. He, he said, well, they were good people, they were Christians, but they didn't go to church. He walked to church every Sunday. When confirmation came around, he walked to confirmation class. I just wish my confirmation kids were that dedicated, that they'd walk. Their parents didn't make them go. Lyle didn't have parents that made him go. He wanted to be there. His family said, somehow, Lyle seemed to realize that true life wasn't found here, but true life was found with God in God's kingdom. That's why Martin Luther says we're people who live in two kingdoms, the kingdom of this world, and we have one foot in the kingdom of this world, and our right foot should be firmly placed in the kingdom of God. Hebrews. This is probably the best text that talks about the communion of saints, the people that surround us. All these died in faith, and all these is referring to all the Old Testament heroes that we have. They died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on earth. For people who seek thus, Make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared for them a city. But as it is, they, de they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Lyle desired that better country, that heavenly one. He understood that his citizenship was not in this world. Ultimately, it was with God Almighty. And when Lyle died, there was a certain sweetness over him. And it not, was not only Lyle, and a lot of people, when they come to that point of realizing their time has come and they're going to die. Uh, I'd come into the room, I remember... Uh, he, he, the Sunday afternoon of his uh, 60th anniversary celebration, family and friends were all there. He, that day he just could not get out of bed and they sent him to the hospital at three o'clock in the afternoon. They called me early Monday morning and I went over there and Lyle was certain that today was the day he was gonna die. And I talked to him for a while and Lyle, would hold my hand and he'd hold my hand the whole time he was there and he'd have a big smile on his face. And I told Lyle Monday, today is not the day, Lyle. I do not think today is the day. Tuesday came along. He had a pretty good day. Wednesday, a terrible day. Thursday, a good day again. 
and he, that's when he voted. And I told him Tuesday, or Thursday night, Lyle, sitting there holding my hand, big smile on his face, I said, Lyle, tomorrow is my day off. It's a busy day for me tomorrow. Do not call me. <laughs> Family called about 536 and said Lyle had died. But Lyle, it was a good day for Lyle because he knew his citizenship was in heaven. So blessed are the poor. Blessed because they put their hope and reliance upon God. It's a good thing. Rick Warren, everybody know who Rick Warren is? A um, best-selling Christian author, runaway best-selling Christian author of the Purpose Driven Church and the Purpose Driven Life. 50,000 people, they say, go to his church in California, Saddleback. And his son committed suicide got all kinds of terrible letters about that. His wife then was diagnosed with a virulent form of breast cancer. And Rick Warren was interviewed. And he said this. He, he admitted that he tended to preach that if you did the right things, and believe the right way, God would spare you from the worst that life can bring, that you would be blessed and pro prosper. You see, he really didn't understand, did he, what the blessed life was all about. It's when you realize you have no hope, no hope in this world. Your only true hope is in God. He said, I disavow that theology. Rick Warren was on the road to understanding what Jesus was talking about. Sue Freshour. Sue Freshour is... Um, wrote one of those stories in uh, Chicken Soup for the Christian Soul. And she tells about um, her longing. And it was, uh, she and her sister were walking on the beach in a lake in, of a lake in Michigan. And as they were walking along, her sister looks down and sees a crumpled up $20 bill in the mud. And she reaches down and picks it up. Sue Freshour says, Oh, all I could think of is what I would do with $20. How much joy I would have in spending $20. And I was thinking, it's not fair. My sister should be giving me at least half, right? But she said, I had these bad thoughts about my sister and it didn't last long because as we walked on the beach, there was another $20 bill that I spied and I got. And she said, the next, the rest of the night, I could hardly sleep thinking about how I was going to spend my $20 on myself. See this longing we have, we try to find answers in things that the world will give us. And the next day was Sunday. They're in church. And she watched her sister as the offering plate went by. And her sister put in $20. And she said, I never forgot what my sister did. But she said, I do not remember how I spent that $20. Our longing, 
we try to find the answers in this world. But Jesus says, blessed are those people. They, very often it's when they're poor, they realize they have no hope but in God. Remember this. There is nothing in this world which will ever satisfy our longing. Nothing. No matter what we possess or achieve or accomplish, it will always leave us hankering for more. And then most importantly, remember this. You're going to leave here today. None of you are Superman or superwoman, or super anything. Well, you're pretty super people, but, but you will leave here with an S for saint. One who trusts God. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for Messiah Lutheran Church and its mission and ministry and all that you do through us. We pray that you bless these financial commitments, these pledges. You bless them and help them to grow, to fulfill and meet all the needs of your ministry and mission through us this coming year. We pray that you bless you, you bless the promises as well as those who are making the promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And gracious God, we sing your praises. We bless you for the immeasurable greatness of your love. And for those who have died in the faith, we give you thanks those who have died this past year, including Larry Hopper, Mel Brooks, Ann Wilbur, James Lampy, Gene Strand, Harriet Smith, Louise Martin, Bruce Mueller, Jane Crisman, Norma Mueller, Karen Stiltner, Cindy Bass, and Lyle Dolly. We pray that you also in your bless in your grace all the saints that are, have been received through new life in baptism this year. We remember those who have become part of the communion of saints, including Henry Ojefo, Alex Boatwright, Amy Boatwright, Keith Boatwright, Harrison James Carroll, Sue M. Lee, Memphis Nesty, Miles Nesty, Farrah Nesty, Willow Nesty, Tatum Cleveland, and Rowan Freeburg. We, we pray that with them, you will help us to let our light so shine before others that may, they may see our good works and glorify you, our Father in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those who have served this country in military service to protect our freedoms. We do pray that you bless our veterans and we pray that you guide and protect those who are serving us currently. Lord, in your mercy. God, our healer, we pray that you lift up people to provide care and consolation who are ill. We pray for those who are suffering from any illness, including Jeannie Burnell Graves, Carolyn Callan, Jaden Cullors, Laura Connor, Jana Everett, Sophia Fledgley, Mary Louise Fisher, Randy Greenwood, Jesse Hansen, Kelsey Cooper, Dennis Holmes, Janet Littlecrow, Chris Marquardt, Lori Pettit, Sean Snellen, Chris Snyder, Rita St. Jimmy, Lucy Stowell, Paul Thompson, Bennett Wilkerson, Kathy Zinter, and Felma Shadowski. Are there any others? We pray that you comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Lyle Dolly, Randall Long, and Edith Larkin. Lord, in your mercy, be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the gifts of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you have put an emptiness inside of us. Help us to have our longing, our blessed, our holy longing directed toward you and your kingdom. And as we leave this place, Help us to be proclaimers of your good news through word and deed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Lord.